Hey, awesome. Yeah, it's good to be in front of y'all. Um, yeah, it's been a while. Um, yeah, before we get started, I'll pray us in. Um, just kind of prepare our minds and hearts to get ready for the message. Um, so if you'll bow with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Um, thank you for um, all the blessings you've given us. Thank you for this, um, this space that we get to meet together. Um, God, I pray that you just um, open our hearts, open our eyes to you. Um, I pray that we can glorify you through what we learn, and um, we can apply this to our lives. Um, thank you for your son. His name we pray. Amen. Okay, so welcome. Welcome in. Um, if y'all don't know me, because I know there's some new faces that I, I don't know people's names. Um, my name is Braden. Um, I've been at GC my whole life. Um, if, you're, if you're here Sunday mornings, my dad's the dude who sings, leads the singing on stage. Um, but I grew up in the GC youth, so I once sat where you sit today. Um, graduated from Central in 2019, uh, went on to the greatest u university in the South and in the world, in my opinion, University of Georgia. Um, but yeah, oh, and then before that, I served as a summer apprentice. Um, so um, just GC youth has meant a lot in my life for sure. Um, but yeah, so I just graduated from Georgia in last December 2022, um, and now I work in Atlanta for Fidelity. Um, and I'm back here. So, but yeah, we've got a jam-packed couple of chapters to get into. Um, so we're going to dive right in. Um, there we go. Okay, so this is where we're going. Um, just kind of keep this in your mind as we're walking through these verses and these chapters. Um, so Paul addresses the problem of distraction in their weekly worship gathering. Um, so just like us, they met every week. Um, they would worship together by singing. They would have a meal together, the Lord's Supper that we just saw. Um, and there's a lot of stuff going on, and I'm going to dive in, and I'm going to unpack kind of what they were doing. Um, but yeah, that's the general theme, is the problem of distraction through the weekly worship. Um, you know, we all understand what distraction is. I've, I was in school. Y'all are still in school. You know, you have a, an assignment due tomorrow or the next day, and you're laying in bed, or you're just doing something, and your phone lights up, and you're like, ooh. I, I'm doing this right now, but I want to be on my phone, or, or you know, you're, you have a project due tomorrow, and, um, you know, you, you have to, like, write an essay, and, um, you know, you just want to watch one more episode of Netflix or whatever y'all watch. Um, so we all understand what distractions are and how it can be, um, you know, it can take away from what we're doing. Um, and this was the same thing at the church in Corinth. You know, they would be having their gathering, and there were certain distractions that were really, um, that they were really struggling with. So we're going to dive in and see what, what they were doing. Okay, so I think Ben, Rocky, and Mrs. D all mentioned this or had this slide in their uh, messages. But I just wanted to reiterate and kind of remind you all that the Bible was not written to us, but it was written for our benefit. Um, and I think that's even more evident in the verses that we're going to go over in a couple minutes. Because there's a lot of stuff in here that... If you just take it for, just read it face value, you'll be like, what does that mean? <laughs> I don't understand that at all. Um, but you have to remember, it was written to the church in Corinth, which was you know, 2,000 years ago, some odd, and way different culture than what we're doing today, and um, yeah, just a way different, different way they viewed things. So it's really important to kind of have this in the back of your mind, um, so just don't, don't forget this, and that'll help you understand the text better, because that's, that's always helped me. Um, okay. Just quick question, who of you have heard of Las Vegas, or who's been to Las Vegas, the city? Okay, not too many. Do y'all know where Las Vegas is? You know where it is, mostly? Okay, it's way out far west near California. It's in the middle of the desert, so it's really, really hot. It's terrible. Um, I went in the middle of summer, it was 110. It was not good. Um, but from what I've read and what I was, I was talking to my dad and he said Corinth was comparable to the Las Vegas of their time in that Las Vegas is his reputation and it's actually called the Sin City. Um, all sorts of, it was an epicenter for idolatry, pagan worship. Um, so in essence, there was just a lot of bad stuff going on at that time in Corinth. Um, so it, overall, you know, it was a city that really needed Jesus, the church and the gospel. And we'll kind of get into that. Okay, before we jump in, a little more caution. Um, we went over context, and that's all really good. Um, but again, there's stuff in here that's impossible to understand without consulting other resources because, again, it's just not our culture. Um, so uh, that's why we have small group leaders, um, Ben, Rocky, me, your parents. Um, we're all 
really great resources. And if we don't know the answer to something, we'd love to point you in the right direction. Um, so yeah, even if, you know, like I said, we don't know the answer, we can help find you a resource. There's a lot of really good free resources out there. Um, yeah, let's just let's jump right in. Okay, so if you have paper Bibles, you can open them up. Um, I think we have some over there if you want one. Um, but I'll have what we're going through on the screen. So, um, and we're in 1 Corinthians 11, <coughs> verses 4 through 6. Okay. Every man who prays or pro- prophesies with his head covered dishonors his head. But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. Is it the same as having her head shaved? For if a woman does not cover her head, she might as well have, have her hair cut off. But if it, if it is a disgrace for a woman to have her hair cut off or her head shaved, then she should cover her head. What in the world does that mean, you know? I mean, it, so, you know, women can, they, they can have their head shaved, but men, they have to keep their head covered. It's just, what, what does that even mean? That's, <laughs> that's really, really confusing. Um, does this mean men can't wear hats or women can't have short hair or they have to have their hair long at all times? I don't think that's what that means. <laughs> um, remember, it's a different culture, a different time, um, and this had many different meanings and cultural sort of things. So when Paul would say, cover your head, um, you know, that would mean either you have long hair or you would have a veil covering your face, um, or like a piece of cloth would pull over your head, so like a scarf or something. Um, and background for understanding that is, remember this was Roman culture, so they all worshipped you know, like Athena and Zeus and Poseidon, like all the different gods, the Greek gods. Um, Roman men would sometimes practice the custom of pulling the loose, loose folds of their toga. Y- y'all know what a toga is? I think you do. It's essentially like a bed sheet, you know, <laughs> just a lot of cloth. And they would put part of it over their head. Um, and this was an act of worship of pagan gods. So <coughs> Paul uses that example because he knows everyone in that time would have known what that have meant is if they did this, then they're essentially doing a pagan worship, and this was really disrespectful to Christ and to the gospel and everything going on. Um, so yeah, everyone would have known it would have been absurd and really disrespectful and dishonoring <coughs> to Christ. Um, so again, he would say that men should not be dishonoring Christ and praying according to the pagan custom. Um, and then in the next verse, when it says about women, again, it's um, not that, you know, not, I mean, in that time would have brought shame to her husband if her head was uncovered. Um, So the point is that there was a distraction for the church and Paul was saying, um, just kind of recognizing the distraction. And I think he's saying just, why are y'all worrying about that? (laughs) And he brought up this point of it being just so offensive. Um, Okay, and we'll keep going on. Um, Nevertheless, in the Lord, woman is not independent of man, nor is man independent of woman. For as woman came from man, so also man is born of woman. But everything comes from God. Judge for yourselves. Is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered? Does not the very nature of things teach you that a man, if, if a man has long hair, it is a disgrace to him, but that if a woman has long hair, it is her glory? For long hair is given to her as a covering. If anyone wants to be contentious about this, we have no other practice, nor do the churches of God. Um, Again, Paul is saying, look, don't let head coverings distract you from what's really going on and what really matters. Because remember, this, they're having a gathering. They're still having a worship gathering. Um, the point is, you know, you're supposed to be building one another up in love. Um, and they're being distracted by things like such as head, ge- or head coverings. Um, you know, stop making this an issue. Stop being selfish. Uh, focus on what really matters. So in short, Paul is telling the Corinthians, do not let head coverings be a distraction to worship. Okay, we'll keep on going. Um, so the video mentioned the Lord's Supper, and Paul will kind of go into it a little bit. Um, so then when you come together, it is not the Lord's Supper you eat, for when you are eating, some of you go ahead with your own private suppers. As a result, one person remains hungry, and another gets drunk. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this matter. Um, so during their house church gatherings, they would all eat a meal together. Um, I, I'm sure a lot of y'all are familiar with the Lord's Supper. Um, this was a meal. It was meant to be eaten in unity with one another. So it's that togetherness. Um, they're eating the meal together like, like a Thanksgiving. You know, you don't just, the kids don't eat first and then the grandma, grandpa, and then the adults, it's, you know, it's supposed to be together. It's, it's supposed to eat together. So it brings you closer together and just you can build one another up. Um, 
So again, this goes on to show that the Corinthians were using their gatherings around the Lord's Supper as an occasion to make distinctions between rich and poor. And the video mentioned it a little bit. Um, and Paul mentions it as you keep on going. But it was something Paul was not a fan of, is the last part right there. He was like, humiliating those. You know, it's, that's a pretty harsh warning. And it e- Paul even goes on later to issue even harsher warnings. So I encourage you to read that. Um, And this is a little after that. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you gather to eat, you should all eat together. Anyone who is hungry should eat something at home so that when you meet together, it may not result in judgment. And when I come, I will give further instructions. So again, he's saying, um, you know, if, if you being hungry is going to be a distraction for other people, just eat beforehand. Because <laughs> the whole point of the meal is to be done together and to bring unity and uh, just to be, build each other up. So in short, Paul is telling the Corinthians to not let the Lord's Supper be a distraction. Okay. A couple more examples, and then we'll get to how this really applies to us. Um, So he continues on. So there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one of the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit, a message of wisdom, to another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another, faith by the same Spirit, to another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another, miraculous powers, to another, prophecy, to another, distinguishing between Spirits, to another, speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these things are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one, just as He determines. I mean, I know wisdom, I know knowledge, I know faith, healing, sure, powers, prophecy, spirits, tongues. What does that mean? <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, that's so foreign to our culture. But again, you have to remember that this is a totally different culture. That's how they would worship. Um, I even have, so I mean, this, it's something that they used to do, and it's something that a lot of churches still do today. Um, I've got a good family friend. Their denomination is Church of God, so it's similar to Church of Christ a little bit. Um, but they speak in tongues and they do all this sort of stuff. So this, this still happens at some congregations today. Um, but, you know, I don't want to get too wrapped up in that because this is not a deep study of tongues and prophecy, all this sort of stuff. Uh, if you want to nerd out, talk to Ben, talk to Rocky. They can give you some resources. And I'm, love they, I'm sure they'd love to um, talk with you about that. Yeah, Ben. Um, but again, yeah, it's, it's not going to be a nerd out study. I just want you to um, hold on to the fact that the Spirit is giving the body and different people gifts, different gifts. Um, it's a, a diversity of gifts um, that, you know, when put together, it helps build the church up, build up, um, build up the gathering. Um, so yeah, just and a little thing for you. I, I didn't know what speaking in tongues was when I was younger, um, but speaking in tongues is just essentially speaking in a language that the speaker doesn't know. Could be a foreign language or a non-human language. Um, but again, it's not a deep study, but I figured I would just throw it in there. And you can ask your small group leaders about that. I'm sure they'd love to tell you. Um, but yeah, they can point you in the right direction for resources and stuff. Okay. Da-da-da. I'm going to skip a little bit. Uh, okay, actually. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not the hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not be, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. So this is right after that verse with the tongues and the prophecy, all that sort of stuff. Um, and Paul uses the imagery of a body and body parts because, I mean, it's very familiar to people. You know, they still had body parts, all this sort of stuff. Um, but, yeah, why are feet talking to hands and ears talking to eyes? That's kind of weird. Um, but, like I said, everyone has different gifts. Um, each complements each other in um, unique and helpful ways. Um, and just like how all parts of the body work together in unison, um, members of the church work the same way. Um, that's what Paul's kind of saying here. Um, he's, God's given us gifts, and we can use our gifts together, um, each different gifts, to help build the body up and build the church up. Um, here we go. 
Okay. So in short, Paul is telling the Corinthians to not let your gifts be a distraction. Um, because a big problem too, and the short little video mentioned it, but um, people are getting hung up on, you know, which gift is better than other gifts. You know, the gift of tongues is better than prophecy, or wisdom is better than knowledge. Um, so anyways, it was, it was a problem they were having, and um, again, Paul's saying that don't let your gifts be a distraction. You know, each gift is unique, and there are some gifts that are great, but you need every gift just like how you need every part of your body. Okay, 1 Corinthians 13, um, you're going to talk about this in a small group, but it's commonly referred to as the love chapter. You hear it a lot at weddings. Um, I'm sure a lot of y'all have seen it before. Um, but this is a really common verse. They, they read this at weddings. <laughs> um, if I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. So pretty self-explanatory, uh, but again, very important reminder. Um, just mentioned about the speaking in tongues and, you know, you can have all the gifts and do all the things, but if you don't have love, then what's the point? Um, you know, again, even the last part, if I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast. I mean, that sounds great, right? I mean, Jesus told us to give to the poor, um, but if you don't have love, I gain nothing. So, again, you can do the right actions and do the right things, but if your heart's not in the right place and you're not doing it with love, you know, Paul says it's pointless. Okay, last little bit um, of scripture, and then we'll kind of talk about how this is relevant to us, um, how this pertains to us, and what we can do with it. Um, what then shall we say, brothers and sisters? When you come together, each of you is a hymn, a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. If anyone speaks in a tongue, two or at most three should speak one at a time, and someone must interpret. If there is no interpreter, the speaker should just keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and to God. Two or three prophets should speak, and the others should weigh carefully what is said. Right. So he's saying, you know, Paul says, of course, um, the whole point is we need to be orderly in our worship. Um, he says here, you know, I mean, just imagine you're a visitor at a church in the first century. Um, again, you have to remember it's a different culture, different time. Um, you walk into the building and, you know, people's, everyone's just yelling and screaming and singing songs and everyone's speaking all at once and it's really distracting. Like, how would you feel if you were, you know, if you were new to the church? Would that be distracting for you? I'm sure it would be. Um, so then, so like I said, it's a port city full of different religions, different people. Um, so if you, like I said, if you were a visitor, it'd be very distracting. And that was the whole point. That's what Paul was really trying to say. Um, if you can have all the great things and do the, t speak in the tongues, and Paul says, that's great. It's great to have a spiritual experience. But you know, if you're all doing it at once and you're being distracting, then what's the point? You know, you're not, you're being selfish. You're not doing it out of love. Um, so that's what he's telling the Corinthians. Okay, in the last little bit. And if a revelation comes to someone who is sitting down, the first speaker should stop, for you can all prophesy in turn, so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged. The spirits of prophets are subject to the control of prophets, for God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. So again, that's kind of the outline, or the, the highlight of this whole passage. Um, for God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. You know, same sort of thing. He's telling people, you know, you can have all these things, do all these things, but again, if you're distracting others, well, what's the point? <laughs> Especially to new believers and new people who are coming to the church, and that's why, you know, Paul set up the church. That's why he wanted to help them. Because um, again, remember, the city is a lot of pagan worship going on, and, you know, the city needs Jesus, needs the gospel. But if believers are doing distracting things, then what's the point? Um, you know, how does that make the gospel look? How does that make Christians look, essentially? Um, so in short, love will compel each person in the gathering to use their role to build others up and not to distract. Um, so you know, what does that look like today? Um, I mentioned distraction and just like your phone and um, watching TV and watching Netflix, but you know, specifically for us in our gathering, what can that look like? Um, 
you know, it's really easy to be distracted. Um, and I remember when I was younger, this is one I struggled with a little bit. Um, an inferiority complex, it's kind of a big word, but essentially means I'm not good enough. So if I sat in the seats down there and, you know, I would look up and be like, oh, I can never speak with a microphone or speak about subjects um, like this. I would just sit down and just be quiet because I was a really shy kid. Um, you know, I would say, first off, you never know how the spirit's going to use you. Uh, but then second off, um, yeah, I've got really good buddies that are super energetic, super, um, you know, super, they love to talk, but they're terrified of public speaking. So it, it, with that being said, like I mentioned before, the spirit gives everyone different gifts. You know, you could be a teacher, a small group leader, um, you know, like I said, teaching class. Um, we've got people running tech in the back. I mean, without them, we would not have a night. It wouldn't be possible. Um, so again, giving everyone different gifts, they're all vitally important. I mean, they, they do different things, but we need each one to work together. And again, that builds the church up, builds um, the gathering up, and that helps the gospel. Okay. And then is worship spirit driven? So this one's interesting. I've, so I've been to a couple different churches and a couple different worship services, um, like different, um, not seminars, conferences, conferences. Um, so conferences, churches, and not naming names, but you know, there's sometimes you just get the feel. I mean, it's really great. They do all the lights and the band and the songs and, um, you know, it's really awesome. But, you know, sometimes it's, it can be a little distracting. <laughs> You're just like, wow, it's just so good. The music's so good. The lights are so good. The production is so good. Um, but at a certain point, you know, if, if it's distracting me or if it's distracting them, then what's the point? Um, yeah, I feel like even, you know, those setting up the worship, um, like those in charge of it, directing it, it can, they can really get wrapped up and really distracted with the way they're setting it up and all that sort of stuff. Okay, physical distraction. This one's pretty straightforward. I mean, if you're in worship and are you, are you distracting someone else? Is someone else distracting you? Um, yeah, y'all are good. I, you don't see this a lot. Um, but I remember when I was young, I would just like look at my brother sometimes and, you know, we would just start laughing randomly. Does that ever happen to y'all? You have siblings. You just, you don't say anything. You just look at each other and then you just start laughing. Um, anyways. Okay, and then this one's a little more internal. So what is distracting you? You know, this doesn't have to be external and worrying about lights and what else is going on. But, you know, whether it's something in your mind is distracting you, it's, um, you know, what am I going to eat for lunch? You know, it's, if you're sitting in church, um, so it's not just things going on. It's, you know, your own mind and you, you still have control over that. Um, okay. Again, use your gifts to build each other up. Um, again, like I said, it's so easy to be distracted. Um, the whole purpose of our gathering is for the Spirit to be working through each and every one of us um, with all the different gifts we've been given. Um, love will compel us to use our role to help each other out um, and to build each other up. You know, people at the church in Corinth were having powerful spiritual experiences, and Paul says, yeah, that's awesome. It's great to have powerful spiritual experiences, um, but again, if you're distracting other people, then what's the point? <laughs> It's really not good. It's if you're being a distraction, then you're not helping the gospel. You're not helping the message of Jesus move on to other people, because uh, then you become the focus, not Jesus. Again, Paul likes it, but if 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 you're distracting others, he says to stop. Um, you each have a role to help build up the gospel um, and build up others when we all work together. You know, we can make the whole body of Christ better and glorify God through us. Um, so again, I'm just going back to this list. Um, I sh yeah, really think about what, what does distraction look like for you? Um, you know, I think we're blessed at Grace Chapel. It's, we don't have to worry about a bunch of fancy lights and um, like a bunch of band and musicians. And, cause, I mean, I, I went to churches, they paid for musicians because um, they were just, they really wanted, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, they really wanted to be good. But again, like I said, if, to the point where it's distracting others, distracting them, um, you know, there's, there's important things, more important things I think you could be focused on and worried about. Um, okay. I think that's all I've got for you guys. It's pretty quick. Um, but I'm going to pray us out, and then I'm going to invite Lily up after I pray, and she's going to dismiss you all to small group. Okay, bow your heads. 
Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you've given us. Um, God, I pray that you can just keep us free from distractions. Um, help us keep in mind the church in Corinth. Um, you know, it was a different time, different culture. Help us to keep that in mind. Um, different set of problems they were dealing with. Um, but again, this, this still applies to us today. Um, God, thank you for your son, um, that he died on the cross for us. Uh, yeah, thank you for these groups that we can grow together and grow closer to you so we can build up the spirit, and build up the church through this gathering. In your son's name we pray. Amen.